Hello my soccer universe to a review of what happened last weekend in Serie A or I should say last week because we had also a makeup game. Overall I have to say it was a rather disappointing round, not many goals scored. Uh, over, I think the goal average fell from 3.6 to about 3.3 something so uh, quite remarkable the downturn in goals. Uh, it was saved by an exciting last match between Milan and Verona, uh, but yeah, it was not that all that exciting for me. But yeah, I'm wearing the Roma, I think this is 16-17 uh, way, which is very similar to the Roma, uh, at least in color and with the crest to the Roma jersey that they're currently wearing. Actually, I like it a lot and if you don't know, I put the Totti patch on there. I bought it basically the day after Totti retired, but they, because they didn't sell me the home shirt with that patch, but they sold the Wager uh, shirt and I was happy to get one of the Lupetto crest. Anyway, that was a whole lot of talk. I did not have anything to do with this round, so let's get right to it. We had on Wednesday a uh, makeup game. Uh, you know, that was the the fallout of the Napoli Genoa game, uh, where Genoa then had to be cancelled and Napoli couldn't travel to Turin, which was awarded 3 0 to Juve. And now we have um, Genoa losing at home to Torino 2 1. Torino's first win of the season took a long while, but it was not that much tra tra trouble. They already have them 2 0 up, and the goal by Genoa came rather, rather late, which meant that for the first time we had uh, an even table in Serie A. Uh, first time in a month and so on uh, but you know most changes were in the bottom with Torino moving now in th uh, third to last still a relegation spot in there in Genoa kind of being stuck down there up on top not much changed and with that we move into this weekend um, I honestly have not seen anything of the Friday and Saturday games yes you want to say Sassuolo but uh, from all I hear it was a, a boring nil nil draw just when I it seems like whenever I'm boosting Napoli or Sassuolo the team that I'm boosting will lose next so maybe I have some magical powers again but yeah Sassuolo could have taken the lead uh, in the league with that win but alas it was not to be Cagliari 2-0 over Sampdoria then a rather surprising 3-0 away win from Spezia at Benevento I actually thought that Benevento will be from the promoted teams the stronger one but hey, uh, that was a surprise too. to me. I'm feeling a little bit Pippo Inzaghi. Uh, I touted Parma for Argentina as a very interesting matchup. <laughs> it was everything but nil-nil. Um, to be honest, Lazio Juve actually saw some of it. Um, except that there were goals scored in a way it had also a little bit nil-nil uh, written. It was not that great of a match overall. Uh, yeah, Ronaldo was playing. I was actually th uh, see, see, sitting at lunch and telling uh, my wife, I bet you that uh, you will, will play in orange in this one. I know, they played in dark blue and actually it looked nice, I have to say. Uh, that was a nice jersey matchup. Uh, it was all Juve at the beginning with Ronaldo getting the goal after Cuadrado assist in the 15th. And a little bit later he hits the uh, woodwork. Uh, you were largely a better team. I mean, uh, the few chances that uh, Lazio had were rather timid shots, or you know, Korea a little bit being a little bit too selfish. However, that was to turn out to be not the worst thing. Um, Ronaldo then had to come off uh, with an ankle in injury, and Dybala came, came on, and yeah, that actually sealed a little bit the deal for uh, for Juve. Because uh, in the last few minutes of stop uh the Juve um, uh, box is peppered with throw-ins, more, 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 more or less. And once they finally could, could clear, the ball comes to Dybala, who loses it and it goes into a um, throw-in very close to the um, um, midway line. And you can see uh, Simone and Zaghi are point, 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 please! You throw it forward, throw it goes forward, and uh, there is Correa who gets the ball and then dribbles through the first two pair of you, Juve defenders. I, I think he even, uh, not, not Max Demiral on that point, then goes to another pair, plays it to Caicedo, who stops it, turns around, and scores a 94th minute equalizer, which he has done already. A very late equalizer a um, week ago against Torino and midweek in the 80th against Zenit. Um, Crazy scenes and yeah, Lazio, uh, you know, getting a little bit of traction with, with that one. 
I also should, when we talk about Lazio, we have, have had to say there was the huge, I don't know if it's yet a scandal, but it has at least a criminal investigation uh, surrounding at least Immobile, who was could not play in Bruges, then suddenly he could play in Torino, because suddenly the COVID test was positive, then he is playing, uh, he's not, not playing this week in the game, uh, you know. Uh, the COVID. So he had a positive test, he had a negative test, he had a positive test. Uh, the doctor saying, yeah, then he should play, then he cannot play. Uh, very, very weird overall setting. And it seems that at least a criminal investigation, there will be a CRI investigation into that matter. And all the testing has to be moved now to uh, certified centers because seemingly Lazio chose their own doctors. And I think it was one in Salerno, which conveniently was also the doctor of Salernitano, who is also owned by Lotito of Lazio. So crazy stuff overall. Then Atalanta Inter was another one. Rather disappointing to, to be honest. The hashtag always watch Atalanta is not coming through, to be honest. Um, yes, Atalanta maybe had the first chance, but Inter could hold it rather open, but it was not headed that this is now uh, all into so on. Lukaku actually was on the, on, the, on the bench this time. It actually took a young cross into the box uh, that um, Lattero can convert with the NFE in the 58th that actually then gave uh, Inter a little bit the upper hand at this point. I think they probably could, could well have decided the game and they had the chance as well. I think in one counter uh, both Vidal and Barella had the chance to make it 2-0 which would have settled the game. But then uh, Miranchuk who had come on uh, right after the um, um, Lattaro goal on the box, gets the ball, it, it seems like, like nothing, but he also turns around, take, takes a shot, and suddenly it's 1-1. And from that moment on, Atlanta, Atalanta was uh, pressing, uh, tried to claim for a penalty, then same thing, uh, Inter probably could have gotten a pair penalty because Lukaku, who came on, was brought down. But yeah, it ended in a 1-1, but... Um, Conte not being happy with his players in, 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 in a way, it was not the greatest of games and I really wonder. Uh, Inter again ha having lead, cannot hang out. Inter seemingly has forgotten how to win. It has been a long time that they have won. Uh, at least it feels like that. Uh, they had a good start of the season, but now it's all, always, I mean, they are not losing often, but they're also not winning a lot, uh, at least in the, champion, in, in the league, in the Champions League, they have, have lost to Real Madrid. And I always think that the performances for Inter are all right, but um, they cannot get the results. They really cannot get the results. And I don't think that Conte will be fired at any point in the near future because he earns just way too much salary. I think he would have to step down for that. And I don't think this will help really but um, there's something not quite right with Inter. Uh, on the other side there are a lot of things seemingly right with Roma especially if you're Henrik um, Hitarian who gets the lead in stoppage of the first half with a header. Tiny man head head heads it in against Genoa. Um, Roma largely had the bad, bad of the game however uh, when Piaka uh, equalized in the 50th, it actually gave the upper hand for a few minutes to Genoa, but then in 66th, Mkhitaryan scores a 2-1, a uh, few more chances for Roma, who are now for firm control of the game, and then Pedro assists Mkhitaryan for his third, and Roma gets a 3-1 win, one of the, uh, the, the winners of this round. Uh, Torino cannot back up the win against Genoa with a 0-0 against Crotone at home, also, Torino should be a much better team than they are. Uh, Bologna and Napoli also, uh, again, a uh, rather disappointing game. Um, yes, there was a really nice goal by Ojiman um, when Lozano crosses in and he is free. Can head, head in in 20-23. Looks all good. The Koulibaly scores the 2-0. Um, However, in the build-up, there was a handball by o o Ojiman, which you really have to watch closely to see that one. But it is that obvious. So that one had, 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 had to be chalked off. And Napoli controls, but he, as it always so, is so often, you all, you then tend to leak in the last few few minutes and Bologna had the chance. I think it was a triple chance towards the end where uh, Bologna could have gotten equal, but Napoli gets the deserved win, which also, I mean, I think Napoli and the Roma can be called uh, rarely easily the winners of this round if you look at the results. However, it was all 
taken over then by the 2-2 between Milan and Verona, uh, which was a super entertaining and fun game. Milan needing to bounce back after that loss to Lille. And actually starting out uh, very, very good, but you know, not firing all seasons. I think there was a cross by Leowin that missed um, Ibrahimovic and Slatan basically stared down. Leao! Leao! Ah! Do it better next time. But the first time that Verona come in front of goal is already dangerous, and then there is a corner kick. The Barak, uh, where then the ball, there's a Sega shot that hits the woodwork, that hits the back of Donnarumma, uh, you know, no, not the back, the, the legs. So the ball, ball is free, and Barak can uh, dust it off into the net. 1 0 Verona. Yeah, we didn't need, need that. But Milan kept going forward, kept playing nicely. Uh, not, maybe not creating many chances, but, but, but we can see that the um, flow of the game was not broken yet. It actually uh, looked all cohesive. The problem is that the next time Verona uh, gets ahead uh, to a to, to, to goal, it's uh, a shot that Calabria deflects into the net and it's 2 0 Verona. And it was literally. Twice Verona came towards the box of Milan, twice they scored, which is so un Verona like. Because uh, if you look at the assets and conversion percentage, uh, and I didn't pick that up, this was told to me um, by the commentator, con they're the worst in converting chances. And here they had three, two shots, or maybe three shots. Let's give them three, and they make two goals from that. And Milan, uh, who have quite a few shots, it doesn't go in at all, and Milan was among the best uh, ones. They fortunately pulled it back in the 2027, where I thought uh, from a Salamakers cross, who was really actually lively. He had a good chance uh, to equalize already. Leao also did uh, have. He uh, gives the uh, Salamakers puts a cross in, and I thought that Cassie put it, but no, it was a Maniani deflection into the goal, another own goal, and it's 2 1 for. Uh, Verona only, and then Milan actually really wanted to get uh, the equalizer, but just couldn't get it before the half. Uh, surprisingly, Salamakers came off for Rebic, uh, but on the other side, it has, it has, has been said it was kind of um, maybe you needed a little bit more offensive power, but I, I personally wouldn't have, have gotten off Salamakers. Um, but it, it be, uh, remained a very in interesting game. John Noglu gets the equalizer around the 50th and then it's called off for offside. I could not really, they didn't show it conclusively. Maybe in a build up, Rebic was offside, but it looked like a millimeter decision. Uh, and it looked like to be one of those days where actually Milan then really had control of the game and was attacking, uh, just the ball didn't want to go in. Uh, prime example, a penalty is given because Cassie is brought down in the, in the box and he is limping. And I'm saying, penalty, please not Slatan, please not Slatan, please not Slatan. He has not done well with penalties as a I mean, in fact, he missed the last two. For a fortune in, in, in a derby, he could put one in of the rebound. Um, yeah, it's Slatan who, who steps up. And I don't understand it. I think you have with Cialanoglu and you have with Cassie, especially with Cassie, two players that are way better penalty takers. No, but what does Slatan do? Uh, the goalie comes to him and kind of says, Yeah, you know, you've missed, missed the last two, and Slatan wants to pull it high. It's a carbon copy of the one against uh, Sparta Prague. Goes in the stands with a lot of uh, power. I thought, okay, that's that. However, Milan does not give up. Another one, uh, <laughs> cross in, Slata goes up, ball is headed down, it's already in the 90th minute, Calabria on the, re on the rebound, puts it in the net, makes up for his uh, the deflection, oh goal, no, it is call off for head ball. I really thought this moment, yeah, this is not Milan's day. Unfortunately, two, two, two minutes later, Brahim Diaz cross and Ibrahimovic heads in and actually then they had even the chance to win it, but alas, it was not to be, but it was a really, really entertaining, good game. For this Milan fan, maybe a little bit too too much, but I, I actually had thought already. Yeah, this is not the game. This is one of those days, and I actually was not that worried um, because Milan played well. The ball just didn't go in, and so you you their performance like that. And maybe with this point, this was like last season when they uh, played this two two at Spal. Where you just get a late equalizer, but that gets you all on a roll. Fortunately, now it's the international break. So with that, the standing is that Milan stay on top. 
two draws on, on, on top and this helps Napoli a lot. Who are now within touching distance, within three points of Milan and Roma also right up there on top. Juve, Atalanta and Inter also stall a little bit uh, as does Lazio and you can see already it's very very even, very 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 even the whole thing. Uh, tour to the bottom, Genoa, Udine and Crotone are now in, uh, down there but uh, Torino might move in there and Benevento also has a minus 10 so that also doesn't look all that good. Uh, if I look at chances now, Inter the slight favorites over Milan. Um, uh, and then it's Napoli and uh, Juve, uh, Champions League also, those four seem, seem to be set. And if we look at re relegation, yeah, Benevento and Crotone are the ones that look in Genoa also. Mm, let's see where we end up there, but uh, it's interesting to see these early trends going. The next round, yeah, Napoli Milan. And here I regret now a little bit that Milan did not get get get, get, get the win because with the win Nap Napoli we will go ahead of Milan. So a uh, huge uh, game I have to say, Gattuso against uh, Milan. I think Napoli. I still am of the opinion that Napoli has probably the strongest squad in all of Serie A at the moment. Uh, they just not firing on all, all cylinders. Uh, if you look at the other games, you know, the other big ones, Atalanta is an away game to Spezia, uh, you at home to Cagliari, there's nothing really. Roma, Parma could be an Inter Torino. I don't see this as a trap game to, to be honest. I mean, it all points to that one last game. Hellas against Sassuolo, that could be interesting as well. But you know, it all points to Napoli, Milan, and that's after the international break. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games uh, this, this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.